Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be talking about the Docker Registry API. This is going to be a fairly advanced video because <laughs> uh, it's fairly complicated and you probably won't ever have to deal with this. Uh, but I wanted to show you some cool things that we can uh, get out of the Docker Registry API and maybe you'll be inspired to build something with it. I recently learned more than I needed to know about this while building an image mirroring thing for work. Uh, I basically wanted to figure out whether I had mirrored an image or not yet, and the easiest way to do that is by poking at the API. Uh, so I learned a bunch about things, and I'm going to share you what I learned. Okay, uh, so <laughs> we're going to have a little shell script that we're going to write to do this. Uh, I actually wrote it in Python for that project, but it's easier to demonstrate this here. And we're going to be doing some interactive work over here to show how this works. OK, so the first thing to notice about Docker images is if you pull an image such as Docker pull uh, Ubuntu, let's just say Ubuntu uh, Focal, for instance, uh, there are some implicit conversions that are happening to this image name uh, that are sort of specialized for Docker Hub. But first off, this Ubuntu image is actually known as library slash Ubuntu, and it actually resides on docker.io. And docker.io has its own special expansion and that docker.io expands to registry-1.docker.io. Uh, I don't exactly know why it's registry1. Uh, this is the strings that I found in the source code of Podman as well as Docker. Uh, so maybe you know better than I do and can tell me why it's <laughs> registry-1, uh, but that's, that's just what I ended up finding. Uh, so, you know, what you normally see is, you know, Ubuntu Focal is actually this, this string, and there's some impl implicit conversions going on to get to there. Uh, but that brings us to our first part of the API, which is you need to authenticate to the API, even if you're doing an anonymous image pull. And that's done by trying to access the registry at the v2 endpoint. You do curl HTTPS registry onedockerio slash v2 slash. Uh, you'll see we get this unauthorized. If we do dash V in verbose mode, you'll see unauthorized. And there's this important www authenticate header. Uh, this header tells us all about how to actually get a token. It tells us the realm. This is where we're going to get a token from. So let's actually grab this. We need to curl, uh, let's set dash UXO pipe fail. We're gonna curl this endpoint. Uh, we need to also set all of the parameters that it says to set here. So service equals registry.docker.io. So let's make sure we set that service equals this. Uh, and then the last part that's not stated here, and this is just something that I figured out by reading the source code, is you need to set this other scope thing here. Uh, and we're going to actually put this in quotes here. Uh, I join the string over multiple lines. Well, you'll just sort of trust me that <laughs> make the make the window bigger temporarily. Uh, you also have to set this this scope here and put the user slash image in here. Uh, we're gonna actually pull pre commit ci slash runner image just because it'll demonstrate what I what I want to show later. Uh, this is the image that pre commit ci uses to uh, perform ci runs. It actually uses the one from GitHub's container registry. Docker Hub is just a fallback there. Um, but let's start by running this command, and this will hopefully give us a token in our response. If we run this here, you'll see we get a big old response, and that is our auth token here. And actually, auth token equals this pipe to jq raw output dot token. That will allow us to get our token. Uh, so if we do bash dash x t dot sh. Okay, cool. We are we're able to set an auth token. <laughs> the script output is going to be pretty noisy. Okay, once we have an auth token, so let's actually just go back to here. Grab our token. They expire pretty quickly, so we're going to... This is going to be... <laughs> how am I going to demo this? Um, anyway, we'll get an auth token, and then we need to uh, access the next part of the registry API. Uh, which is going to be the manifest. I have a little bit of notes here for how to access the manifest. And so in order to get that, you will do your registry URL, you'll substitute in the image and the tag you're looking for. So if we do now curl 
registry-1.docker.io slash v2 slash uh, pre-commit ci slash runner image slash manifest slash latest. So this will get us the manifest. The manifest is a, a little bit of a JSON blob that describes the image. Uh, oh, right. We need to actually use the auth token. Yep, of course. Uh, and to do that, we will do header uh, a header, which is authorization bearer, and then our auth token. Uh, and so that will allow us to authenticate to it. Cool. So now we see our actual manifest here. Uh, let me actually copy this into our shell script so that we can uh, continue to run that there. So we set this authorization header and then we access the uh, URL here. And I could probably actually tab this out now that I think about it. Uh, not much better than before, but <laughs> anyway. Uh, so this is how you get the manifest. Now note that this is the manifest version one, which is pretty noisy and not that useful. Uh, you, can ex you can set an accept header to get a better version of this. And I have that here. We'll get us the V2 manifest, except this. Uh, and if we run that now, You'll see that this output is a little bit more readable. You know, there's, a, there's way less noise here. Uh, and yeah, just kind of lists our layers. Now, this is kind of the top level manifest. And depending on the image that you try and access, you'll either see a map here for a single image. Uh, you can also additionally get a list output. So if we instead put our image up here, image equals pre-commit ci slash runner image and then we'll substitute that in here dollar sign image we'll do the same thing down here sign image uh, if we were to use something like uh, library slash ubuntu we'll actually see a different output here we'll see a list of manifests instead oh actually or it will tell us to <laughs> It will tell us to re reaccess the uh, the list here. So we actually want to use a different accept header, which I happen to have over here, uh, which will get us our list of manifests. This is one for each architecture, Ugh. and it has kind of a bad looking output. So we're going to pass through JQ so we can actually see what it is. Uh, yeah, so you can see we'll have different manifests for each architecture. And it tells us to access this digest here, uh, which we'll get to in a second, to get the actual manifest for each of these sub images, because uh, this is a multi-architecture image. I did a video on multi-architecture, so I'll link that in the description. Uh, this is kind of the nitty gritty of how that works. OK, cool. So let's go back to our original image rather than Ubuntu. Uh, and you'll notice the first kind of annoying thing about the, the Docker API. Um, which is that if you don't have a list of images, it'll just ignore what you did and give you back the V1 manifest. We don't want that. We want our V2 manifest. Uh, so you can kind of hack around that by specifying multiple uh, accept headers here. And this is what I ended up doing in my little thing. Uh, this says, we prefer the list manifest. If you don't have that, send us the flat or, or the a single manifest, but with a quality of 0.9, basically telling it, I prefer the other one over this one. And so if we do that now, we should be back to our, our V2 manifest. Uh, so you do kind of have to figure out which manifest it's going to be, and the API sort of ignores your accept header. Uh, I think if it were to spec with accept, it should just reject the request rather than giving you nonsense, but I don't know. <laughs> it's just the way the API is implemented. Uh, once you have a manifest, you can start downloading blobs of things. Uh, most of the Docker API is actually these blobs. And in fact, these manifests are available as blobs too uh, via you know, the particular digest that you use to grab them. Um, but I'm not going to show that here. There are two important things that are blobs that you can get from a manifest. The first of those is the configuration. This tells you all sorts of details about the image, such as which commands were used to build it. Uh, I actually use this in pre-commit CI to pluck apart an image and pull down individual layers to inspect some stuff. Uh, so let's actually show that here. So uh, resp equals 
actually just capture this whole curl into a response and then we can grab particular parts out of it. So if we do uh, curl dash, I like this same auth header again, curl, uh, we are going to access this other API, which is the blobs API. And to do to uh, HTTPS registry one dot docker dot io slash v2 slash image slash blobs slash and we're going to grab a particular blob so let's let's start by showing what the configuration blob looks like so we can do jq dot jq raw output dot config dot digest uh, to grab that particular blob out of this image um, so let's run this again ht.sh uh oh, what is it doing Oh, I forgot to feed in the input here. Oops, uh, that way we actually get a response. Let me show you this whole command because it's off screen. Uh, we're basically grabbing a particular field out of the response that we saved up here. And if we run this now, should get back our, uh, we get back an error. <laughs> what error did we get? What did it actually try and request? Uh, oh, is it because it's not URL encoded? It's probably because it's not URL encoded. What is percent in URL encode land? <laughs> this is my hacky way to figure out uh, how to percent encode things. It's just Google search for it. Percent 3A. Uh, and Try that. 301, 307 temporary redirect. Okay, so it was that, I guess. That's weird. Uh, that's just location to make it follow. There we go. Okay, so now we have the configuration at the end. So we can jq dot that to show what it looks like. So here is here is the image configuration of the pre-commit CI image. You can see all of the commands that it used to get built, all of the environment variables. Uh, yeah, basically the whole details of the image are available here. And I use this to find interesting details such as, uh, where is it? This isn't the, let's do, instead of latest, we'll do latest dash full, tag equals latest dash full. Find all the places we have this and do tag. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, I use this in particular to find uh, markers, such as, where is one of the markers? These are all args. <laughs> Where's one of the commands? Here we go. Uh, so for instance, echo lang r. So pre CI uses this to figure out, okay, this is the r language layer, so we need to pluck that out specifically. Uh, but that's how you access the configuration. Uh, you can also grab any of the individual layers. So let's actually just go back to where we were spitting out the response. And if we do jq dot resp, show us back our manifest. Uh, so you can actually pull out any of the layers here that you want. So let's say that we grabbed, let's get one that's not so big. Uh, let's grab the very last layer. Uh, so we're going to do but uh, maybe we should not grab the last layer. Dot layers, I wonder if we can do dot layers negative one. Layers negative one. I don't know if JQ supports negative indices. We're about to find out. Oh, seems it does. Okay. So let's grab the digest of that. And we will take the same blob command that we had up here because uh, the same API works for anything else. Uncomment that. Blob equals this. We'll just, oh, we need to do that same set dance again. Pull into percent 3a, I think it was, percent 3a. Uh, yeah. Cool. And stick this blob in there. Uh, but we're not actually going to get JSON back this time. We're going to get a tar file out.tgz. 
because uh, each layer in a Docker image is just a tar. So if we run this now, uh, 404 not found. What do you mean? <laughs> Why not? Did I do this wrong? Okay, what did it actually try and request here? Uh, oh, we need to do raw output here. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, cool. So it did download this. Uh, looks like Docker is hosted on Cloudflare. And we now have this tar file here. So if we do tar dash dash list out dot tgz, uh, oops, dash f, uh, you'll see that this particular layer is the Lua layer. So you can see all of the files that are from that layer. Um, basically what Docker does is it pulls down each of these layers, extracts them on disk, and then builds a layered file system from that. Uh, but anyway, that's kind of the basics of the Docker API and some of the stuff that I learned and how you can also poke around it just playing around with curl and just hitting these particular API endpoints as well as the weird accept quirks. <laughs> just most of the frustration that I had while building this this thing here was dealing with those multi-arch images. Um, so here's kind of the same the same code in Python where you know, we try and hit the registry, we look for that authenticate header. Uh, we set this particular scope. The realm is where we get the token from. We then, you know, forbid all those things in there. I have the same accept dance that we have there. Uh, and here is pulling down a particular blob as an example. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> this was fairly complicated. Uh, but I wanted to share you the stuff that I learned. Uh, anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.